Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time visiting. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. Uh, on this channel we talk books and today I am recording uh, number eight in my series um, that I have been recording about the Dewey Decimal System. The reason I'm recording these at the moment is this year, 2023, I am hosting a non-fiction reading challenge that is all about the Dewey Decimal System. Uh, we have, I've already um, recorded and released uh, all of the prior sections so the 0 hundreds through to the 600s um, and I will put a link up in the cards to the playlist where you can find the rest of those you don't have to watch them in order um, you can watch and read <laughs> for the challenge in any order that you wish um, so today we're talking about 700s and uh, this is the section that is all about arts and recreation and this is actually the probably the biggest um representation of my physical collection of non-fiction books. I have so, so many um, books in this section. And in previous videos, I've shown you the entirety of my collection and supplemented it with some books from the library. I've decided for this one just to show you a selection of books from my collection because it's just this I, this video would be an hour long if I showed you everything that I have. Um, and I haven't even documented in my own um, spreadsheets and so on uh, to all of the books that are in this section because I have a whole shelf which I'm looking at behind where you are right now that has a whole lot of art books on it um, because for a time and probably still but less or so now i am i have collected lots of books about particular artists books that are have come from different art exhibitions that i've visited and so on so i have a lot of books in this section of the dewey um so let's get into it um today as with all of these videos i'm going to be referring to the wikipedia page that goes through what all of the classes are and kind of breaks it down uh, for all of the numbers that come before the decimal point. It doesn't break it down for the numbers that come after the decimal point. I'm going to show you some books from my collection. I do actually have a couple to show you from um, the library as well, or from one of the libraries that I uh, borrow from semi-regularly. Um, so I will show those to you as the time comes, but we're going to go through them from top to bottom, basically the 700s. So let's start with 700s. So this section is uh, all about the arts. So we've got uh, 700 is just the arts. 701 is philosophy and theory of fine and decorative arts. Then we've got things like dictionaries, encyclopedias, etc. of fine and decorative arts, special topics, serial publications, organisations and management of the fine and de decorative arts, education research related topics, galleries, museums, private collections of fine and decorative arts, and then history and geographic treatment, biography um, of people within the arts, basically. <laughs> um, so that is sort of like the, the big section, I guess, um, where a lot of, I guess, my art books are going to be located, the ones that are about you know, fine arts. So I'm going to show you one, two, three, four books that I own that are from this section. One is one that I have recently acquired and I didn't include it in one of my haul videos, so I wanted to include it here. Um, it's a gigantic coffee table book called Dreaming the Land, Aboriginal Art from Remote Australia. Um, this is by Marie Geisler. And the call number for this book is 704.039915. Um, this is a gigantic coffee table book. It's got lots of big spreads of different artists um, and information about each artist uh, that is included in here. Um, and I picked this one up for a really, really good price on sale. Um, and I was so pleased when it arrived because... Uh, it is just a beautiful book, and I'm so glad that I now have it as part of my collection in the 700s. Another book that I picked up, and this one I bought with money, um, or voucher money, I should say, that was um, given to me for my birthday, um, is The Mirror and the Palette, Rebellion, 
Revolution and Resilience, 500 Years of Women's Self-Portraits by Jennifer Higgy. And this is a book that I'd had my eye on. Um, so when I got this bookshop voucher for my birthday, I was like, I know exactly which book I would like to get. I called them up. I reserved it. They held it behind the counter for me. I was so, so pleased to be able to pick this one up. Um, so this is, as the title suggests, all about women's um, self-portraits and sort of the history of those um, and it's definitely something that I really want to read about so I will eventually get to this book um, and I will be very excited to read it I'm sure. The call number is 704.9424. Uh, I thought I'd include this one because it does pertain to the title of my channel um, and it's called Ways of Curating by Hans Ulrich Obrist. Um, this is just a little book. Uh, the call number is 707.5 and this is all about curation. So what can what can curating help us to do? Hans Ulrich Obrist is one of the most influential figures in the art world today, drawing on his own experiences from staging his first exhibition in his kitchen to encounters with artists, impresarios and thinkers. He shows us how curating allows us to create new futures. So a little bit of theory about curating. Um, and the final one that I'm going to show you from this sort of section of 10 is this one. Uh, it's called Kusama, the graphic novel, and it is by Elisa or Elisa Machelari. That one. I always forget what the C's are, how they work in italian -y sounding names. Uh, the call number is 709.2. Um, and this is all about the artist Yayoi Kusama, who is an artist I really, really like. Um, I think her work is very interesting um, and I followed her career for some time. Uh, this is a graphic novel about her life and I'm going to very selectively choose a page to show you because some of them are not safe for work. <laughs> so um, it just is telling her story from her childhood through to now. Um, so yeah, I will eventually read this book, but I just wanted to show you too because it's gorgeous it's absolutely beautiful and if you know her work you know that um dots are a huge part of a lot of her artwork so this dotty cover is just beautifully done um so i can't wait i can't wait to read this one <laughs> all right so that is the 700s sort of first 10 numbers in the dewey let's move on to the seven tens now and this is all about area planning and landscape architecture. Now, I don't actually have anything in my own collection, so I will show you a book in a moment that is from the library for this section. Um, so, uh, as it, you may guess, area planning and landscape architecture is the first one, 710. Then we've got uh, 711 is area planning, civic art. Then we've got landscape architecture, landscape architecture of traffic ways, water features in landscape architecture, woody plants, in landscape architecture, herbaceous plants, structures in landscape ar architecture, landscape design of cemeteries, and natural landscapes. And the book that I've uh, picked up from the library to show you is called Wild Gardens by Inspired by Nature by Stephanie Mahon, and the call number is 712. Um, so just a beautiful uh, illustrated book here with lots of lovely photographs of some beautiful gardens that can inspire you when you are doing your own landscape gardens, I suppose. Beautiful pictures in that one. Okay, let's move on to the 720s, and this is architecture. Now, I don't have a whole lot of books in my collection, but I do have one, so I'm looking forward to showing it to you. Uh, so this is all about architecture. So we've got things like the materials and structural elements. We've got um, uh, historic periods of architecture. So uh, the 722 through to 724 is they are historic periods of architecture then we've got public structures buildings for religious and related purposes buildings for educational and research purposes residential and related buildings design and decoration of structures and accessories um, so the book that i have to show you from this section is all about notre dame uh, and it is by ken follett uh, who is the author of the pillars of the earth which is a book that i read years and years ago and absolutely loved and i'm definitely due a reread to see if it's still a five-star book for me uh, but this is a little non-fiction book that he wrote all about Notre Dame Cathedral and if you've read the Pillars of the Earth you know it's all about cathedrals so um, he obviously an obsession of his. Uh, a Short History of the Meaning of Cathedrals by Ken Follett. Um, so yeah I'm definitely looking forward to picking that one up at some point. 
All right, then we move on to 730, and this is all about sculpture, ceramics, and metalwork. Um, so here you're going to find books that are specific to um, all of those kinds of things. So we've got things like sculpture and related arts, processes, forms, subjects of sculpture, sculpture from earliest times to fi uh, circa 500, sculpture of non-literate peoples. Uh, then we've got Greek, Etruscan, Roman sculpture, sculpture from circa 500 to 1399. So we've got some historic periods again, and then sculpture from 1400, which is um, 735. Then we've got carving and carvings, numismatics, and sig sigil sigilography. I always struggle with some of the words every single video. Sigilography, I think is what that says. Uh, so that's seven, 737. 738 is ceramic arts. And then we've got metal, art metal work in 739. Uh, I don't have any books in my collection from this section. Um, so I've got one from the library to show you. And this one is called Paper Poetry, Creative Paper Cutting by Helene and Simone Bendix. And the call number is 736 0.98 so that puts it under carving and carvings that's that section um so this is just a um illustrated it's actually like a here's how you make this project kind of um book but it also kind of goes into kind of the history of of such things um but it has some little projects in there as well um that you can work on if you so desire uh for example Here's a project on making Christmas hearts. Okay, the next section is the 740s, and this is all about graphic arts and decorative arts. Um, so we've got a section here for graphic arts, then we've got one for drawing and drawings, perspective in drawing, drawing and drawings by subject, communication design and visual design, uh, decorative arts, textile arts, interior decoration, glass, and then furniture and accessories. I have two books to show you from this section, both from my collection. This one is Penguin by Design, a cover story 1935 to 2005 by Phil Baines. And this is all about um, the covers of Penguin books. Um, so it's got all sorts of really um, gorgeous illustrations of the different covers and different styles that they have employed over the years we'll take one from further back um and sort of just tells you all about um you know how those designs came to be um so i was super interested to find that one the other one is all about wallpaper and it's called bitten by witch fever wallpaper and arsenic in the victorian home by lucinda hawksley um this is a really gorgeous book first of all the cover is absolutely stunning um, however, this is basically, this is just, uh, it says facsimile samples of 275 of the most sumptuous wallpaper paper designs ever created by designers and printers of the age. Um, for the first time in their history, every one of the samples shown has been laboratory tested and found to contain arsenic. Uh, so obviously this book does not contain arsenic, but it shows you like the actual wallpaper um, that did contain arsenic um, and it shows you all sorts of things and there's also information in here it's not all just pictures um, but I love that they've decided to do these kind of like little pages in between the bigger pages which have the actual designs and that's the information so yeah beautiful book um, it sits kind of weird because it's skinnier here because of those that cut out design which you can kind of see if you look at the top of it there um, than it does at the spine so yeah very interestingly designed book uh, and one that I'm keen to explore in more detail. Okay, that's the 740s. Moving on to the 750s now. And this is all about painting. So we've got painting and paintings, techniques, procedures, apparatus, equipment, materials and forms. Uh, for 752, it's colour. Uh, then we've got symbolism, allegory, mythology, legend, genre paintings, religion, uh, human figures, nature, architecture, 
textural subjects and cityscapes and other specific subjects. And then 759 is history, geographic treatment and biography. So for the 750s, I'm just going to show you one book, which is all about a uh, portraiture prize that I love um, that is hosted here at the Art Gallery of New South Wales um, in Sydney, where I live. And it's called Archie 100, A Century of the Archibald Prize. And the call number is 757.079. Um, this is a book that was gifted to me and it is all about um, the Archibald Prize when it when it turned 100, which I think was in 2020 or 2021, uh, somewhere in that vicinity. But this book is not super old. Uh, so it was published in 2021, which is when the prize turned 100 years old. Um, so, yeah, uh, very exciting for me because I love this prize. But, yeah, a beautiful book that has um, images as well as information about the winning um, prizes from each year. And you can sort of see the evolution of the prize from sort of really um, traditional styles of uh, portraiture through to um, much more kind of, uh, yeah, so there's some sort of controversial ones, some different styles um, of painting that have been used over the years. We've definitely got some um, really, I'm just trying to find a good example here of someone that's painted, well, I mean, the cover gives an example. Um, so yeah, lots of really interesting portraits in this one. Okay, the next section is the 760s, and this is all about printmaking and prints. Um, so we've got things like uh, block printing, we've got lithographic processes. Oh, here's the other one. Here's another one with, with the tricky words. Chromolithography and serigraphy, metal engraving, mezzotinting, aquatinting, and related processes, etching and dry point and then just a general section on prints. Uh, I don't have anything in my collection um, for this number, so I've borrowed one from the library. Uh, this is all about David Hockney, um, and it's just called Prints. The call number is 769, so this is from that prints section, and it has a selection of his prints inside. Um, for example, there's some of them there. Okay, um, yeah. That series is called the Weather Series. Um, but yeah, so if you've got books that are about um, people who are creating prints, um, but also just books that are about the actual process of doing it, this is where you would locate them. All right, moving into the 770s. This is all about photography. Now, I do actually have a whole section on photography in my collection, but I'm only going to show you one today, uh, which I hauled um, a little while ago now um, and was really interested in when I found it um, secondhand shopping. Um, so this is photography, computer art, film, and video. This all lives under this 770. So we've got photography, computer art, cinematography, videography. We've got a section on techniques, procedures, apparatus, equipment, and materials. Uh, metallic salt processes. We've got pigment process of printing. Um, so 776 is computer art, then we've got cinematography and videography, 778 is spe uh, specific fields and special kinds of photography, and then 779 is ph photographic images. So I've got one that is just with the call number 770, and it's called uh, The Plant Kingdoms of Charles Jones, uh, and it's by Sean Sexton and Robert Flynn Johnson, with a preface by Alice Waters. Um, and this is just a... Uh, this guy who was not known as a photographer, taking photographs, there he is. Um, that's my cat scratching in the background if you're listening to that sound. Um, so basically, this is all about some photographs that he was taking. And this was back in the day of like the, so it was roughly in the 50s, through 30s through to 50s, I think. Oh no, that's different. Oh, let's, let's have a look at his ones. Uh, so the photo, these photographs are vintage prints from 1895 through to 1910. So this was, um, you know, he was doing these a long time before it was a thing to take photos of your food. But he's just produced these beautiful, I think it was sort of discovered quite organically that he had these amazing photographs of vegetables that he'd sort of posed and taken um, and printed. 
also some flowers. So yeah, just a really interesting um, sort of situation and guy to learn about. All right, let's move on to the 780s. And this is where we head into music. So of course, arts is not just about the visual arts. It's also about all of the arts, including music. So um, this is the, the whole section on it. So we've got 781 is general principles and musical forms. We've got vocal music, music for single voices, instruments and instrumental ensembles and their music, ensembles with only one instrument per part. Uh, 786 is keyboard, mechanical, electrophonic, percussion instruments. Um, then we've got stringed instruments. We've got wind instruments as well. So sort of all about the kind of specifics of different types of instruments, but also just music in general. I have one book to show you from this, and it's a book that was gifted to me by my parents and I still haven't read, and I really, really should. Uh, it's called The Song Remains the Same, 800 Years of Love Songs, Laments and Lullabies by Andrew Ford and Annie Haino. Um, so yeah, this is all about um, love songs, basically. <laughs> the song remains the same. So it's sort of looking at tracing the history of um, of song and yeah uh, it's something that is definitely of interest to me um, so basically it's each chapter is about a particular song um, and so for example chapter 33 here is about the song Dancing Queen um, by ABBA and uh, sort of goes through the music and also the lyrics and sort of just talks about it and that chapter goes for about two and a half pages so each I guess it's sort of one that you can kind of read in bite size. Maybe I should pick this up and have it as a sort of one to read, you know, just sort of pick up and and have a flick through and just do a chapter and then sort of leave it. Like maybe this will be a good one to have to read at bedtime. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so that's that one. And its call number is 782.42. I'm feeling really inspired now to pick this one up. <laughs> Okay, um, moving on to 790. So here's where we get into the kind of more recreation side of things rather than to um, the uh, arts side of things. So here we have uh, the, the entirety of this 790 section is called Outline of Sports, Games and Entertainment. So here we've got Recreational and Performing Arts is in 790. 791 is Public Performances. 792 is Stage Presentations. Uh, we've got a section for Indoor Games and Amusements, Indoor Games of Skill, Games of Chance, Athletic and Outdoor Sports and Games, Aquatic and Air Sports, Equestrian Sports and Animal Racing, and then 799 is about Fishing, Hunting and Shooting. Now, obviously, I don't have a whole lot of books that are about um, fishing, hunting and shooting. <laughs> um, however, I do have books that are about performers um, and also these are all coming under... 791 the ones I'm going to show you now which is the section for public performances which is interesting um, but they're really really specific call numbers <laughs> um, so the first one I'm going to show you is called A Little Devil in America in Praise of Black Performance by Hanif Abdurakib I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that name um, and I heard this one recommended which is why I picked it up the call number is 791.089 and of course this is all about um, black performers and kind of essays about about them and I think it's they're all um, I, I think they're individual essays that have been put together into a book so yeah it's in it's broken up into five sections um, and yeah sort of just looking at different topics around black performance um, which should be amazing to read Mm, this one I I am definitely going to be reading this one very soon I hopefully have a buddy read coming up um, with it shortly and it's madly deeply the Alan Rickman diaries um, which of course is by Alan Rickman because it's they're his diaries but it's edited by Alan Taylor and there's a forward by his beautiful friend Emma Thompson the call number for this one is 791.430-2809 see what I mean about really specific call numbers <laughs> um, so yeah this is the, the diaries of the amazing lovely Alan Rickman and I can't wait to read this one the last book that I'm going to show you is one that a lot of people have on their shelves and actually um, we're talking about a lot last year because which I believe that's when it came out is this one um, I'm glad my mum died by Jeanette McCurdy uh, and the call number for this one is 791.4502 um, so lots of people were talking about this when it came out it was a really groundbreaking memoir about her life um, and 
was also sort of talking about um, the role that her mother played because uh, she was a child actor um, and her mother was um, dealing with some stuff is my impression that I've gotten. Um, and yeah, so, you know, was potentially abusive is what I think. But if you've read it, and because I, I have not, um, but if you have read it and would like to let us know if that's correct or not, that would be very helpful. Um, yeah, so it says Jeanette McCurdy was six years old when she had her first acting audition. Her mother's dream was for her only daughter to become a star and Jeanette would do anything to make her mother happy. So she went along with what mum called calorie restriction, eating little and weighing herself five times a day. She enjoyed extensive at home makeovers while mum tried it. Your eyelashes are invisible, okay? You think Dakota Fanning doesn't tint hers? She was even showered by mum until age 16 and was also forced to share her diaries, email and her entire income. So, yeah, this is sort of her talking about her experiences of having her mother very, very controlling in her career and what that did to her um, mentally and, you know, the sort of eventual outcome of all of that. So, yeah, if you've got this one on your shelf and you've been looking for an excuse to read it, um, this could be your chance. This is your opportunity <laughs> to pick it back up. All right, so that's the 700s, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I have down below in the in the description, um, all of the books that I have spoken about will be listed there. Um, so you can definitely pop in there to have a look um, and if you were, you know, wanting to find out about any of them, um, you can follow up with them there. I'll also pop links down there to the challenge, um, to the Wikipedia page um, that goes through all of the uh, sections of the Dewey um, and yeah, any other resources that I think will be useful for you. So thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.